Historically, fables or parables have allowed writers to criticize individuals or institutions without endangering themselves. An author could always claim that he or she had aimed simply to write a fairy tale, a hypothetical, meaningless children's story. Even now, when many nations protect freedom of speech, fables still come across as less accusatory, less threatening. Orwell never condemned Stalin outright, a move that might have alienated certain readers, since Stalin proved an ally against Adolf Hitler's Nazi forces. Moreover, the language of a fable comes across as gentle, inviting, and unassuming, the reader feels drawn into the story and can follow the plot easily, rather than having to wade through a self-righteous polemic. In writing a fable, Orwell expands his potential audience and warms it to his argument before he even begins. Because fables allow for the development of various characters, Orwell can use characterization to add an element of sympathy to his arguments. Especially by telling the story from the point of view of the animals. Orwell draws us in and allows us to identify with the working class that he portrays. Thus, a fable allows him to appeal more intensely to emotion than a political essay might enable him to do. Additionally, in the case of Animal Farm, the light-hearted, pastoral, innocent atmosphere of the story stands in stark contrast to the dark, corrupt, malignant tendencies that it attempts to expose. This contrast adds to the story's force of irony, just as the idyllic setting and presentation of the story belies its wretched subject matter, so to do we see the utopian ideals of socialism give way to a totalitarian regime in which the lower classes suffer. Finally, by writing in the form of a fable, Orwell universalizes his message. Although the specific animals and events that he portrays clearly evoke particular parallels in the real world, their status as symbols allows them to signify beyond specific times and places. Orwell himself encourages this breadth of interpretation, while the character of Napoleon, for example, refers most directly to Stalin in deed and circumstance. His name evokes his resemblance to the French general turned autocrat Napoleon.1. How does Orwell explore the problem of rhetoric in Animal Farm? Paying particular attention to the character of Squealer. How is language used as an instrument of social control? How do the pigs rewrite history? 2. Discuss Boxer. What role does he play on the farm? Why does Napoleon seem to feel threatened by him? In what ways might one view the betrayal of Boxer as an alternative climax of the novel if we consider Napoleon's banishment of Snowball and the pig's initial consolidation of power as the true climax? 3. Do you think Animal Farm's message would come across effectively to someone who knows nothing about Soviet history or the conflict between Stalin and Trotsky? What might such a reader make of the story? 4. Of all of the characters in Animal Farm, are there any who seem to represent the point of view of the author? Which of the animals or people do you think come s closest to achieving Orwell's perspective on Animal Farm?